it's time to talk about colliders. We've been using them all along, but it's time for us to really dig deep into what they are. If I choose one of these objects in my world here, say this wall, and I take a look in the inspector, I see that I have this thing called a box collider on it. I talked about these a little bit before. I can go to edit collider and see that I have this little green outline that I can kind of click and drag and move things around. What exactly is this? Well, it's the system in Unity that tells the physics engine what to collide with as kind of implied by the name. One of the most important things that we need to be realizing about colliders is that they are a different thing than the visuals that we're seeing on the object. Let me prove it to you. The mesh renderer is the component that's responsible for actually doing what we call painting the textures and painting the visuals. It's the, it's the shininess, it's the color, it's the texture itself that gets managed by the renderer. What happens if we turn this off by unchecking it? Well, in the scene view, we see that it's disappeared, but we still have this green outline. That green outline is the box collider. If I run my game and I move my character around, I recall that there's a wall right about here. I'm moving my character and it's getting stuck. Why is it getting stuck? Because, well, there's something here and I'm running into it when I try to go there. I'm stuck again. That wall still exists in a collider form, even though the renderer is disabled. If I turn the renderer back on, there it is. And now it's gone again. And I'm stuck when I try to move against it. If I disable the collider, you'll see that I can move through no problem. What about a disabled collider and an enabled renderer? It is a wall that I can walk right through. So in order to make kind of the general objects in our world, I have these two components. One of them being, let's actually look at these stairs here. The renderer, I'm still walking up and down the stairs, despite them being invisible and the collider. Disable it, I can fall right through. These stairs are no longer walkable. So maybe your brain's already going, oh, I can do some cool stuff like having hidden areas with secret kind of invisible walls or, or uh, colliderless walls. Or another thing that we could do is to create some boundaries for our world. So I'm gonna head back to this wall object. Now, which one was it? This one here, turn the rest of back on. I'm gonna copy and paste it for now just to kind of save a moment's time, not the ground, this one, this one, copy paste, there we go. And I'm gonna move it to the edge of my world here. And what I wanna do is actually stretch this thing out so that it extends <clears throat> all the way along the boundary, <clears throat> excuse me, of my world. I'm gonna call this world, did I make a new game object? I meant to rename it, rename. I'm gonna call this uh, world boundary. And what I'm simply gonna do with this is just make sure it's kind of roughly along the edge of my world and I'm gonna turn off the renderer. <clears throat> now what I've been able to accomplish is creating an invisible wall. So now if I go over to the edge of the world and try to walk off, I cannot. I can still see everything off the edge of the map, but there's an invisible wall there and there isn't at this back edge. So here I can fall off to my doom. We've all probably played video games where we suddenly get to a spot where we couldn't go through. And really what we're running up against is, well, a collider that's sitting there existing and blocking my path. I'm able to actually just build custom colliders whenever I want. If I create an empty game object and I put it kind of maybe, let's just call it a game object for now, leave it like this. And I move it over kind of near my player. Let's go and zoom in over here and move align with you. Stick it over here, maybe lower it down a little bit. And I click on add component and type in collider. I see that I have some options. I have a box collider, a capsule collider. I have some two dimensional colliders and sphere colliders, lots of different types of them for different purposes. And I also have this mesh collider. A mesh collider allows me to have colliders on more complex shapes. And this is something that we generally want to have automatically applied to things. For example, if we take a look at the stairs, it has a mesh collider added to it. And what this does is try to actually match all the shapes of the stairway in a custom way to match the mesh of the outline of that shape. Making a mesh collider for an empty game object doesn't really do much because it doesn't have any information to be able to work with. So maybe I just wanna add a basic box collider to this. Now something that I'm able to do is simply just, well, set some of the parameters for this. I can actually edit this and expand it out in different directions. Now this game object itself is a little bit rotated. So let's just straighten this thing out. 
And this object really is just simply a collider that I can edit and stretch out in whatever way that I want. So let's just do this. Now that it's in, in my world, let's see what's gonna happen when I try to move my character through the space. I try to move back here and I've hit an invisible wall. I didn't even have to create an object. I created an empty and just added a collider to it. And now I have this invisible thing blocking my path. So colliders are really just the physics that's invisibly there preventing me from walking through it. And we also have a couple other options I wanna talk about briefly. We'll see how these kind of interact with the next set of tutorials. But at any collider that we have, we have this toggle that says is trigger. Now on the stairs, I can't choose it right now, but on some of my other objects, including this invisible one, I can choose is trigger. Let's see what happens when I choose is trigger and I try to walk through this invisible wall. Huh, I'm able to walk through it, no problem. And I can see here if I turn off is trigger and I try to walk through this invisible wall, I'm stuck. So this is trigger appears to disable it. However, it's actually just making it behave in a different way. What I'm doing when I say is trigger is I'm saying, I don't want you to automatically apply a response to this. I want you to trigger a response that I can customize a response to in Unity. Let me show you a bit more about what I mean uh, by creating a basic script here. I'm gonna create a script called trigger example. And what this is gonna do is allow me to pop in here. And in my script, I have a special tool called on trigger enter. This tool or method is triggered, is turned on whenever I collide with something else uh, that moves through me. So rather than just bumping into me, I'm triggering something in a region that's being touched. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm, I'm gonna use a new tool that I haven't shown you before, I don't think, called debug.log. And this allows me to print a message uh, touch the invisible wall. Print a message to my screen once this thing is interacted with. I'm going to see it down here in the console in Unity if things go according to plan. So what happens now is I'm moving my player and I see this message pop up. Touch the invisible wall when I pass through that space. Here it goes again. Touch the invisible wall. Touch the invisible wall. What I've been able to accomplish is that this trigger is now a zone where something happens. For example, one thing I can do with this is I can move this over and place this in front of my staircase. And maybe there's an event in my game, for example, that I want to have happen once the player has touched the staircase. So what I can do is maybe just move this at the start of the staircase and narrow it in just a little bit so it wraps around the staircase. I don't need to be perfect right now, but just kind of get it a little bit closer. Cool. And so I have this zone that the player, it doesn't stop the player. It's not actually a physics thing blocking me. It is instead a trigger that when I reached it, I can now know the player has stepped onto the staircase. And I know this in my game in code responsiveness because I set up this collider with a trigger the player has stepped onto the staircase. Now, of course, it's gonna say that again if I, as I walk off, but really this might just turn something on, an event of some kind. Maybe it turns on a rotation, or maybe it turns off a light. And soon we're gonna talk about kind of triggering events, but here's kind of the first foundational lesson here, that I can actually have things that I collide with that prevent my passage, the other things I collide with that trigger responses. And the response would be added here in the code. For now, just try to get a couple colliders up and running, maybe add a script to check if you can get a trigger to work properly, and create some invisible boundaries and walls in your world to master the skill set. See you in the next video.